What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Realms of Metal. Eddie here, back with you from you know where, my happy place here in the woods in PA. We got a special one today. We got a special guest. We got my my man George from George G's Room of Rock on the show, man. George, nice to meet you. You too, Eddie. Really Thanks good to see you. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks for asking me to do this. It's yeah. Really so if cool you're not familiar, to talk about. Yeah, if you're not familiar with George's channel, George G's Room of Rock, check it out on YouTube. Uh, he does all kinds of stuff on the channel, very knowledgeable guy, very passionate about the music. And, you know, that's what you look for in channels like us. So, uh, be sure to check out his channel. Really great stuff and a great guy. Oh, thanks a lot. You too, Eddie. So so here, I'm when, in the room of rock. You're in the, room, the metal room. So we kind of <laughs> work it out that way. So when George and I were going back and forth, uh, I kind of left it up to George to kind of pick the topic and, uh, he picked a great one, man. We're going to talk about Bolt Thrower today. You know, we're going to go through the whole discography and lineup changes and, you know, what we like about the records, if there's any we don't like about the records and uh, all that good stuff. And uh, to start off, we'll just do a brief history on Bolt Thrower, just in case you didn't know. Um, I just did a, a little kind of a dive on Bolt Thrower just to see what I can come up with. And uh, this is kind of what I came up with. So. I used uh, the metal archives. I used, uh, you know, Wikipedia and all that stuff. I used the records. So Bolt Thrower formed in Coventry, West Midlands, England in 1986 by Gavin Ward and Barry Thompson. Now, they're the two guitar players for Bolt Thrower, as you know. Uh, originally, Gavin Ward played bass. Okay. So rounding out that original lineup was a guy named Alan West, who they got in on vocals. He only lasted a couple years. and He didn't make it to the first record. And a fellow named Andrew Whale on drums. They started primarily as a grindcore band, you know, but after the first couple of releases, they they would eventually morph into like a more death metal style that the butts the bolt thrower that we pretty much all know. Uh, the band took its name from a weapon in the strategy game Warhammer Fantasy Battles. That's where the name bolt thrower came from. And in April 87, they released the In Battle There Is No Law demo. Uh, the second demo was called Concession of Pain, which was recorded later in 1987. This is when Gavin Ward switched guitar and they brought in Alex Tweedy to play bass. You know, Alex didn't last very long as he didn't show up for the recording of the Concession of Pain demo. So shortly after, uh, they brought in Joe Bench on bass, who was Gavin's girlfriend at the time. Just about just before they were about to record their first full length, they replaced Alan West on vocals with the mighty Carl Willits. And in June 1988, we got the first full length. And what was that? <laughs> Here we are. In battle, there is no law. Very raw. So tell us about that. Tell us when it came out and who was on the lineup, George. You got all that? Okay. Well, it came out in uh, 1988. And the lineup, hold on. Let me, uh... I, got, I got it here in front of me if you don't have it. I do. It's got to I keep dropping everything. <laughs> First of all, you know, just how did you uh, get into them? How'd you hear well, about Bolt Thrower? Uh, I, I saw War Master in my local record store and I bought it based on the album cover when I was a kid. That was my first Bolt Thrower record. War Master? War Master. That's the first one I got. <laughs> it's funny because I when I bought it, I blind bought it. I just bought it for the cover. Yeah, me too. It's the first death metal album I ever bought. I didn't know it was a death metal album. When I put it on, I'm like, oh my God, it's that death metal. I'm like, I can't listen to that. So I shelved it. And then I kept going back to it and going back to it and going back to it. I'm like, this is really good. And it's around yeah. that. That's what got me into it. I got to be honest with you. The first death metal uh, CD or a cassette I ever bought was the first Deicide. But even thinking before that, I had bought uh, Autopsy Severed Survival on a whim. And I took it home and I remember not liking it when I first heard it, you know. So yeah. I think that was the first real death metal release that I ever heard. But, it's definitely an acquired taste. Yeah. You know, but I grew, you know, I grew but, to love it very quickly. So I'm sure you yeah. did. Yeah. Death metal is just a, definitely something that, you know, you, you, I always ask myself why I like this stuff. I just like it. My wife can't stand it. <laughs> She's like, you can turn this stuff off now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, dear. But um, as far as the, all right, the lineup, well, mine just isn't my first name. So, um, so Carl, Carla Willits is the yep. vocalist, and um, Joe Bench is the bass player. Yep. Now, like you said, Whale. Um, what's the first name? Andrew Whale on drums. Andrew Whale, 
And uh, see, this goes by Boz and Cav on the first that's, album that, here. See? That's Gavin Ward and uh, Barry Thompson, the two founding members, right there. Yeah, there you go. Yep. You show up it on your on your vinyl that my then my CD here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that record, uh, Joe Bench, like she was the first female I can remember in an extreme metal band. Like I took, I went, at, I took, I did a deep dive on females in extreme metal. Uh huh. I mean, of course, there were females in metal before her. You had like, you know, the Plasmatics and the Runaways and, you know, Vixen and Girl School and all that, Warlock and Doro. But as far yeah. as extreme metal goes, can you think of anybody else who, who female, who's been in an extreme metal band before Joe Bench? Uh, you know, no, because I didn't, you know, I got into it. I was kind of surprised it was, it was a woman that doing can't. that because you don't really hear about it. I mean, you had, um, the great cat you know the great cat is? i remember her beethoven she's, on speed yeah she's <laughs> nuts so there you go i mean that's extreme metal but she's pretty crazy but she I mean, was, was really freaking extreme, nuts but... yeah i agree yeah so that's the one i could think of and anyone else now but she really is you know i think she's the unsung hero of the band because she's really such a great every album she just you can hear her and she just that's what that gives them that the both or sound is her and she really helps give that sound. And like yeah. I remember opening up that cassette fold as a kid and you know, looking at the band pictures and the lineup and stuff. I'm like, Joe Bench, and like first female I can remember in an extreme metal band. Yeah. So that Crazy, record but... was produced, engineered, and recorded by a guy named Andrew Fryer, who who hadn't done much. He did stuff with Bolt Thrower and Creator, uh, mixed by Alan Scott, who Bolt Thrower is his only credit. And uh, the cover art is uh, from a guy named Paul McHale, who's done cover art for like Cerebral Fricks. He did the, some Memoriam stuff. That was Carl Willett's band after Bolt Thrower. If anybody doesn't know, uh -huh. we'll get into that later. But uh, in Battle, There Is No Law, uh, Grindcore album, right? I mean. Yeah, it's very, very, very raw. Very like, I don't want to say demo -y, but it's like about a little bit above a demo. But still, yeah. I mean, it's got... Some great tracks. It's more, I guess, more on the thrash end a little bit. Some of the tracks more, and he doesn't sing as guttural, yeah, as on the on future albums, right? But I mean, you got the, I mean, the title track is an amazing song. You know, aftermath, attack in the aftermath, probably two favorite ones on the album. Those are my two I like, favorite ones. I love in battle, very there's no law, concession of pain, and psychological warfare. They're probably my three favorites. But definitely, you know, grindcore record. You know, more of a grindcore record than the death metal they would play later on. Definitely. And, uh, very primitive sounding, right? When it comes to production. Yeah. Well, that's what it was. I see how much of a budget could they have had back then, you know? Probably not it, much, it, it was, you know, it, I don't know how big the label was then. Probably very, very super small label. It reminds but, uh, me uh, sonically a lot of uh, like maybe a subconscious terror where it's a, it's a good album, but I think the production kind of lacked on it. Absolutely. That's you another know? one that's like, you know, very good black comparisons with them and benediction thinking you know, out yeah. for some oh, yeah. reason you know i feel like these two go hand in hand that's i you know that's why i love that you mentioned them because i know you love benediction too yeah that's what i mean that's what got me into them i've just heard stuff i don't know why i heard something from, from them and i said oh you know and just kind of remind me of that so yeah great band though both of them great so that was 1988 in battle there is no law that came out it was their first full length and it came out on vinyl solutions that was the label yep so let's jump to 1989, their second full length, and this was on Earache. Yep, pretty much the same the same uh, lineup too, I believe, right? Same lineup, Realms of Chaos, Slaves to Darkness. Uh, came out October 28th, 1989. Um, same lineup as in Battle There Is No Law, produced by Digby Pearson, who's done stuff for like Carcass, Morbid Angel, Napalm Death. Yeah, engineered and mixed by Tim Lewis. Cover art is by John Sibick, and it was taken from a book called Rogue Trader. Yeah, this it's great. They have great, great um artwork inside too. Yeah, I'm killer. The same guy though. Super killer. Same guy. I didn't even look it up. I think it's the same guy. Yeah, it's amazing artwork. That's one thing about their albums, and this one's like much better produced and much you know. This is a lot of people's favorite. From uh, from what I read, when I hear, when I watch on uh, YouTube, this is like one of their people's favorite albums. Yep. But um, took me a while to get into this one. I guess I mean I I had bought the uh, Warmaster and what do you call it, the Fourth Crusade, and this one was the third one I bought. 
but it didn't really resonate with me. Just some people talk about this as their classic. Everyone yeah, loved it. I'm like, well, it took me a while to really get into it. But now I really you know, like it a lot. So Me too. It's, so, you know, it's sonically, a it's a little bit better than In Battle There Is No Law, but not by much. Really not. You know, it's still pretty primitive sounding to me. Yeah, a little better production, but still, you know, better than the debut. But, you know, they're on a major label, so they must have got some money for yep. the production value. Absolutely. And what tracks do you like on this one, George? <clears throat> Oh, it's Eternal War, World Eater, Prophet of Hate. Those are probably my three favorites on here. But you can't get another one. Like, none of these, none of the albums have anything bad on them. No. Uh, it's really, I don't say that. I'm like, you know, you're gonna, well, that one's like, they, they really don't have that in my Not opinion. Anyway. No, that's what I would, but that would be like my three favorites on here, though. I, I'm going through the Eye of Terror, All That Remains, Lost Souls, Domain, and World Eater for my favorites on that one. The Angry Grand World Eater right there. Good stuff. Really good. Did you ever see them live? Never saw Bolt Thrower. Wish I did. Yeah. The because they broke up. Well, they broke up a long time ago. But still, <laughs> you were so old enough, you could have gone if they came I, around. I don't think they came around in the states. They were coming to the states. I don't think they ever did. I don't remember them ever coming around here touring ever. But who knows? You never know. All those well, European festivals. <laughs> yeah. So let's jump to 1991. Their third full length on Earache. My first bolt thrower, your first bolt thrower, War Master. Oh, such a great album. I remember bringing this home and just being kind of like blown away by this record. It's still my favorite bolt thrower record to this day. And uh, me too. <laughs> I just listened to it last night again. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's just from start to finish. I mean, it's the way I can't say enough good to... things about it. I think from top to bottom, that from a songwriting standpoint, from a production standpoint, it's, you know, my favorite by far. Absolutely. And there's not, there's, not, there's not a weak track on this one either. This is probably their, for me, it's their strongest album, but yeah. that, that may differ on people's opinions. But So we I got mean, the same lineup on this one as the previous two records. This was produced, produced, engineered, and recorded by Colin Richardson, who's done all kinds of stuff. Cannibal Corpse, oh, yeah. Napalm Death, Creator, Overkill. Um... Cover art is by a guy named Pete Nifton and Ian Cook. There's not much I could find on Ian Cook, but Peter Nifton did the Nocturnus Thresholds cover. You know, if you are familiar with Nocturnus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, music video for Cenotaph. Yep. Which was actually the that riff on Cenotaph is the closing riff on World Eater. It's so kind of like a continuation of it. And uh, this record was definitely a more death metal approach than the previous two. Yes, definitely different. Um, moved more into that 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 territory. That's what, well, like you said, what they're more known for was that. Yes, it definitely was that sort of sound. Yeah, but um, it's the intro with Unleashed is uh, probably mankind, probably my favorite track, along with War Master and Afterlife. I love Afterlife. Yeah, great one. I love all the like tracks it, on this record. I really do. There's nothing wrong. With, yeah, every every track is on here. Yeah. I always like what I noticed with uh, with uh, Cenotaph. It's like a lot of their, the songs that do their history. They always start off and they it just it just fades into the song. Right. Yeah. Into, I'm like a lot of the songs do it. I'm like I don't know. It's something about that I like. I don't know. What That's the one thing Bolt Thrower does so well through the discography is they just get these chugging rhythms, you know, dun 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 yep. dun, 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 dun dun, and they just it makes the song. It's like Bolt Thrower's signature thing, you know, like just grooves exactly and like i've said before when you when you like i said i bought the album just for the cover because i don't know what it was like and it's like it looks almost like conan the barbarian kind of look you know yeah and it's like and but back in the day when you buy an album by the cover you didn't know what it looked like instead yeah. of sampling it, you're like well that looks good i'll buy it you know you don't you know you know it's going to get something heavy it was going to be heavy either way yeah i know it's going to be that heavy though from back in the day because i think yeah. this was um like you said it was 91 i didn't start getting into death metal like maybe like 93 94 okay so this is what was um a couple years old by that point yeah. so yeah it was 90 for me when i heard that first dsi that's what really like catapulted me in it into death metal yeah that's a harsh one to get into start to start off that's that's one if you like that you're like you're all you're off to the races that was a little <laughs> even too much for me so like, i think it's the way they track his voice right you know, yeah. she, so that was War Master. So let's jump to 1992 and go with the Fourth Crusade on Earache Records. 
Another great one. Another great one. Same lineup as the previous three records. The lineup is still intact, you know, which there's the line like oh, I get you went to ops away. I get there you go. Yep. There they are. That guy's wearing a forbidden twist in the form shirt. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, and Carl Wells is one of vicious rumors. <laughs> Welcome to the ball, I think that is. That's where or I like that too. I don't want bands wear other shirts. I'm like, oh that like, like what do you want to expect to wear that kind of shirt? Like if you ever if you, the um Oh, the good guy in uh, the Dangerous Toys wearing a death shirt. Yeah, I was like, "Why is he wearing a death shirt?" I was like, "That was weird to me because you know they're not like you know." More, I, so I always like that kind of stuff. I don't Gordon know. Red brought that up in the video I did with him too. We were talking about Dangerous Toys, and he mentioned the guy in the death shirt, and uh, it was pretty cool. So this was produced and recorded by Colin Richardson again, mixed by Alan Fish, who I couldn't find any credits on, and a guy named Steve Harris, and not the Steve Harris that you're thinking. This Steve Harris has done stuff for like Gorguts, Carcass, Fear Factory, Acid Rain, engineered by a guy named John Cornfield, who's done stuff for like Reanimator, a really underrated band, uh, The Almighty, Fudge Tunnel. Cover art is uh, from a painting from 1840 by Eugene Delacroix. So it's pretty interesting. I like the, I like the cover. Makes it different. Too. Me too. To what they had before, so I, I really like enjoyed that. I would th those kind of covers. I would think are very interesting because they're actually real, real paintings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from and the olden me, days. This one got almost doomy in spots for me. Like I call, I call it death metal style with kind of doom in in, in it, and it, I, it was definitely more slowed down than War Master for sure. Got yep. just those thick, heavy punching riffs. That, you know, absolutely. That their signature definitely stuff. With Definitely with songs like uh, with like Ritual. That's like my I think that's my favorite both of our songs. Ritual. Great track. Comes in like that, and the um, this time it's War and uh, Who Next to Conquer. Yep. Those are like, my three uh, favorite ones. I like the title track. Embers as the world burns was really good. Uh, that's Dying a good one. Is really good. It's another one. They're all good from start to finish. There's really no bad one on the album. Really not. I mean, really not. And that track Embers uses that cenotaph riff again. It's back. Yes. I noticed that. <laughs> yes. Because I listened to this the other day and I'm like, I was like, yeah, you're right. That does. Because it's funny. Well, you know, bands do. They repeat themselves. They're allowed. It's their own band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the fourth crusade and that was their <clears throat> uh, fourth full length. Yep. Let's go to 1994. Okay. We've got for victory, their fifth full length on earache. Came out November 24th, 1994. Same lineup as the previous four records, if you can believe that. Yep. Produced again by Colin Richardson. Engineered again, John Cornfield back. Uh, the cover photo was a photo of British inf infantrymen during the Falkland conflict between Great Britain and Argentina in 1892. And... This would be the last uh, release with Andrew Whale, the original drummer on drums. Very good. Very true. Yeah, this one, um, honestly, this is probably one I didn't get into too much. I mean, I listened to it recently, and it, it, it's good. It just, I don't know, it didn't hold my attention as much as the other one. So I'm going to be honest about it. But again, the tracks are good. Uh, Lest We Forget, The Forever Fallen, and Tank. Those are my three ones that, that stand out. But Right. When I was listening to it, I kind of got lost in it, and I kind of forgot where I was. And that's, I don't know why, just that that one, that one, and the next one, kind of felt the same way about. They kind of samey in a way, but I kind of felt like I didn't get as much attention just as the as the first. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's a solid record, but I I don't think the songs grab you on this one as it does other releases from them. You know. Yeah, yeah, and I think that they stopped. Uh, I think they stopped for a while after this album. So they, the new one wasn't put in for four years after this one, wasn't Correct, it? Correct, right. So did they break up and come back? I wasn't really sure. Like I don't know like, if they broke up or went on hiatus or what. But but still solid out because I mean I, I watch the other channels and sometimes um this is their favorite album, is this one here. You know, but like you said, we all hear things differently. So yeah, it's funny. I mean, you talk to different people about throw bolt thrower, and I feel like everyone has a different album that is their favorite. You know, absolutely for different reasons. So, which is which is yeah, great. It depends when you came into the band too, right? Totally. Yeah, for sometimes, like I said, our first album was Warm Up. Maybe that's what our favorite. It's our first one. It doesn't always work that way. But sometimes your first album you buy a band, it's just so special to you. You've heard it yep. so many times. You know it inside and out. You know what's coming. You know the riff. You know that little drum part. Yep. You know, kind of just the way. It, that's with any band. It doesn't have to be just both or, but any bands like that. Totally agree. 
So I think my favorite tracks on here are probably Remembrance, uh, Lest We Forget, I think is really good, and uh, Tank MK1, probably my three favorites. Yep. Tank's a really good one. Yep, yep. And then I think there's, then they, like you said, four years until the next one comes out in 1998 with Mercenary. Yep. So, so that Let's go to uh, 1998 and their sixth full length on Metal Blade this time. Uh, yep. Mercenary came out November 9th, 1998. We have our first lineup change on here. We have uh, Andrew Whale was out and uh, new drummer Alex Thomas on drums. Yeah, this one too. Same, same kind of thing. It kind of didn't, not that it didn't hold my attention. I liked it when it came out. I listened to it a lot. But um, again, the songs just didn't grab me as much. I think, um, I don't think, I don't think they have leftover tracks or anything, but yeah. Um, Zero is a great song. Great. Uh, to the last. And uh, No Guts, No Glory. I really love No Guts, No Glory. It's yeah. one of my favorite ones. So I, I like know. this one a little better than For Victory. I just think the songs are a little me bit too. better. You yeah, know? me too. I think it's very, it's very uh, good. This is the, um, what do you call it? This is one just took a while for me to get, um, get back into. I can listen to it again. I can listen to all these again just to get a familiar record. Because they don't like, there's certain ones you listen to a lot. Yeah, those you kind of listen to. Like that was one of those I listened to. Like oh, once in a while, listen to it. Yeah, but uh, not again. They don't put anything on bad. It's just like you know, only on how you how you feel about it. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, this was produced and engineered by Ewan Davies and Bolt Thrower. Ewan Davies has done stuff for like Paradise Lost, Cathedral, Napalm Death, to name a couple. Uh, track six was engineered by a guy named James Anderson. I don't know why he engineered just one track. Uh, cover <laughs> art is done by a guy named Peter Archer, who I couldn't find much else out about. And um, the the track Powder Burns is a continuation of the track Embers from the Fourth Crusade. And uh, shortly after this, uh, Carl Willits would leave the band. Yeah, Pat, I didn't read up on why he left the band. Do you know why he left, he the, left band? the band? You know, he left on his own terms. I'm not sure why. I really couldn't get that. But uh, I was actually looking for documentaries on Bolt Thrower to actually watch before this to see if I could just fill in some gaps here or there. But I really couldn't find yeah. anything, to be honest with you. Yeah, that, some of those bands people do documentaries on. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, Mercenary. I think it's a strong record. You know, my favorite tracks are... You know, zero laid to waste, uh, return from chaos and mercenary. All good tracks. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. And then, uh, what's it? Three years later, we get two thousand one. Two thousand one, seven full length on Metal Blade. On the Valor Pride. And, this is what uh, I really like a lot. I, I mean, love this record. Don't... I gotta be honest with you. It's right behind War Master for me. It's a, it's a great. Um, Dave Bigger again. Benediction fits in perfect with it. I love, I love the riffs on this one. Totally agree. One thing about, I don't know if you, um, if you had this original CD or, or or LP. Did you have this original LP or CD? I had the original on CD, yeah. But now, do you know the way that the way the way it opened? Yeah. <laughs> with, this, with this whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's 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 kind of bizarre. And I did this when I did the Metallica review. I did. I was like, well, it's just, well, they did the same thing. But the same thing. It's like it's it's very bizarre, you know. It folds out, but yeah. at least the disc didn't fall out. The Metallica one, but it all depends. But uh, you know, I think it's a great it's a great album that some people pop, usually put their bottom of their list. But no way, this is I, this is number two. It's a different me. singer. Number two for me, uh, and it has nothing to do with Dave Ingram. First of all, I'm a big Dave Ingram fan, you know, and I know yeah. you are too. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with him being on this record. I just think that the songs are strong on this record. I really do. And uh, he fits in perfectly with Bolt Thrower. You know, vocally, he's very similar to Carl and Spots. And, you know, Carl, him and Spots, I feel like they're kind of interchangeable. Two legends, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then the other lineup change you had on this one was Martin Kearns on drums, who would eventually yeah. be, you know, the Bolt Thrower drummer, you know, from there on out, who actually passed away in 2015 at 38 years old which is a that's real terrible. tragedy yeah that's terrible i hate so that when this was just die young for, for I, you I know. know i know it's terrible 
So it was produced and engineered by Andy Faulkner, who's done stuff for bands like Beholder, Savage Messiah, Out for Blood, if you're familiar with any of those. Uh-huh. Cover art by Jan Mininghouse, who's done stuff for like covers for Creator, Udo, Destruction. Uh, like we said, the only record without Carl Willits on vocals. And then uh, Dave Enger would leave the band in 2004 due to health issues. And then shortly after that, you know, Barry Thompson, you know, original member, reconnected with Carl Willits, you know, who agreed to rejoin later in that year, 2004. Yeah, it's good. What, are, what tracks do you like on this one? I kind of love all of them. You know, my favorites are, um, <laughs> I love Honor. I love that opening riff in Honor. I just think that. I agree. I, it sticks in my head. And you know what else really sticks in my head about this one, George, is that track Seventh Offensive. You know, like towards the end of the track, it's got that groovy part, just a real headbanger yep. of a part, you know. So absolutely anybody out there, if you're not familiar, Google that track. Just put it on YouTube, Seventh Offensive, and listen to the whole track. But like when there's like a minute left in the track, they go into this sick ass groove and it like just it's what bolt thrower is all about for me. Absolutely. Absolutely, I I love uh, the second track inside the wire. I love really the good. riff on that. That one, really like, good. it's like, oh my god, it's just the way the way they just. I don't know how to. Explain. I'm not going to sing it or anything, but yeah. but that that riff is just the way they do. It. I'm like just, just braided headbangs when it comes on. Totally agree. Totally agree. Absolutely amazing. If I were to rank the records, this would definitely be my number two, right after Warmaster. This would probably be my number three next to it would be Warmaster, uh, the Fourth Crusade, and then this one. Pretty close though. Yeah. Very good. So let's go to from 2001 to 2005 and the eighth and final uh, release from Bolt Thrower on Metal Blade. Those once loyal. Go on. Hope it comes in all right. <laughs> I don't get the best light in here sometimes. No, it looks yeah, good. It's, it's, it's another one. The, the, another one that's just. Um, this is such light, light text. Um, but this, I guess it's the same lineup as the last one. So, yep, same lineup as the last one, except Carl Willits is back on vocals. Yep, uh, Carl Martin is Kearns back. is back on drums. Uh, produced and engineered again, like the last record, Andy Faulkner. Again, cover art by Jan Mininghouse. Uh, solid record. I, you know, I like this one Absolutely. a lot too. At First Light, Entrenched, The Kill Chain is super killer. Uh, Anti-Tank, Dead Armor is another really good one for me. Yeah, me too. At First Light, I think I agree. Granite Wall, I love a lot. That's a great one. And uh, the, the title track, Those Ones Loyal. Yep. When Cannons Fade. It's all, it's all, it's all, it's, it's sad that it's your last album, but I, I get it. Yeah. But I wish it would have went on. I wish it went on, I wish to, it went uh, on too. I really do. But it's been like I didn't, I didn't realize it until I was looking at the date. I'm like, oh my god, 2005. That was a long time. <laughs> We're talking 18 years ago now, you know, or 19 years, 2005, 2005, 20. Right? That's a long time. It seemed like it just came out. I know, really. You know. So but, uh, at the end of Bolt Thrower, so pretty much would sum up the end of their uh, existence. Pretty much, uh, Martin Kearns, who was that later drummer that joined the band, he was in the band from 94 to 97 and then rejoined again in 2000. He died of a heart attack at 30 at the age of 38 uh, in September 2015. You know, the band went on a hiatus and they canceled their tours. Uh, in September 2016, the first anniversary of Martin's death, Bolt Thrower announced on their website that they would not continue explaining we spent over 20 years together touring the world with three different vocalists, but Martin was so much more than just a drummer to us. So when we carried his coffin to his final resting place, the bolt thrower drummer position was buried with him. He was and will now forever remain the bolt thrower drummer, our powerhouse and friend, Martin Kitty Kearns. Uh, that was a statement from the band. And then there was, you know, the rumors of the band's breakup were then confirmed by Carl Willits, and he stated... I can confirm that Bolt Thrower are definitely over for good. There will be no reunion tours, etc. No compromise. And then and they, stuck, they later, stuck to it, too. He did, right? But then a little bit later, he would go on to form Memoriam, which is, you know, a band that he formed very similar to Bolt Thrower in style. Yeah. And uh, he brought in Andrew Whale with him, uh, which was the original drummer for uh, 
bolt thrower and uh he's no longer an active member but you know he did it he did bring him in originally on memorial that's cool i was i was looking forward to that when i heard that was coming out yeah so i got that that first one's really really good i only have like two i think the first one i have the first one and the third one by them they've like what like five albums out now yeah i think so yeah the morium stuff I didn't is really that. solid I heard the new one's really good from what people said. I forget that one. There's so yeah. much stuff to get. I can't keep I up anymore. I don't have the vinyl, <laughs> but uh, I do have the digital on it. Yeah. Just I do, I do the, uh, the ghost. I forgot to pull them out, though. <laughs> but people know. People would know. For fans of the band, they would know the Morum is. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so, it. Yeah. There's the, you know, the... The full discography, brief history, the lineup changes, you know, concluding with kind of what Carl's doing now with Memoriam. Uh, Want to add anything else? No, what's, um, what, is Joe Betts any other bands or is she done? I don't know. I I'm gonna, I'll check it out right now. I, I think she's done. No, I don't see anything for her. You know, I show no active bands, you know. Yeah, you never know. I just curious if she went into, into any, anything else. You never know. No, nope. like I said, I thought the unsung person in band they don't they don't talk about. <laughs> but just like you said, one of the in that first extreme bass player, which you don't in the, in the now it's I guess you see a lot of a lot of females in the extreme. Well, back then you didn't see any of that. Not back that, then. Pretty, I mean, now it's pretty. It's pretty common. Yeah, all female death metal bands. Like what's that band uh, I keep hearing about? What's Castrator. The one. Yeah, they're really good. And yeah, there was another one, an old, another old school death metal band. I forget when they formed, but it was Durkada. You ever hear of them? No. Durkada, all female death metal band. I, I've heard of them. I don't know the history, but I think they go back to at least the early 90s, if I'm not mistaken. So I have to I have to do a dive on them to see when they formed. But there's so much out there. <laughs> Crazy though. Yeah, but this was this was a lot of fun doing this. this was yeah, this is really band. good. It's cool because it's funny because it's my first death metal band that I ever looked to. So it's kind of funny <laughs> that, that you that we picked that one, but you know that was that was really good, really good, really enjoyed yeah. it. That was that was good great stuff. Great suggestion. Talk about bolt throwers. That was definitely it's definitely a band that I wanted to fit in here somehow, somewhere. You know, so yeah. There's there's a. I mean, I was listening to. I just got that um that that Frozen Soul album. Very bolt thrower like. Yeah, like to me that one, the Glacial Domination. Is that the one that you got? Yep. Yep. To me, that's kind of like a throwback record. It reminds me of like uh, a record I might have listened to in the early '90s. It's got that kind of yeah. feel to it. I really I dig think, it a lot. I think that's why I like it. Yeah, <laughs> but I think they have another one before that says even more like Bolter. I don't have that one because I just I, I just that kept hearing either. about this album from people. I'm like, I want to listen to it and let's hear what it sounds like. Well, this sounds a lot like Bolter. I'm like, that's my thing. Let me get it. So it's really good though. So I'm sure there's a lot of bands sound like them or try to emulate that whole thing. So. I mean, yeah, there's another band who really kind of rips them off called Humiliation. I think they're from like Malaysia or Indonesia or something. Actually, Humiliation is actually pretty damn good, but uh, you know, complete bolt thrower ripoff. If you are familiar yeah, with well, them, who, no. they rip off each other. Come on, yeah. <laughs> How many bands sound like this band? This sounds like this band. They all rip each other off. They got to take it from something. Yeah. You know, so very few bands have their own sound that that sets them apart from everybody else yeah you know, they have to have it you know they have to start off with like we're going to sound like this guy then they move on and move on then yeah. it become the, then it become what they are yeah you know like the, cool. there's that um the band gruesome yes yeah it sounds like they're just sound like death total death worship but, yep. but they're good though i it's mean good. the band's good I haven't, I haven't got anything by them but i keep i listen to them i'm gonna get some they got a lot of albums out too but what's wrong with that if you like it who cares if you like it it doesn't matter no, exactly. But the good songs, it doesn't matter. You know, it was kind of cool to see where Bolt Thrower started with that kind of grindcore ish vibe they had and to end up where they did that grooving death metal. They just sort of found themselves, they found their niche, you know, and uh, it's cool to yeah. see where bands start and where bands finish. I always compare it to like death, you know, Scream Bloody Gore yep. to, uh, you know, the, the last record of. Uh, what was the name of it? The the one with the red yeah, cover. Sound, sound, sound of Perseverance. Sound of Perseverance, yeah. Like to go from where he started to where he ended up. I mean, it's it's crazy. Yeah. So as you're talking about death, just to just to change the subject a little bit. Are they the first death metal band or is possessed the first death metal album? The seven churches. What do you think? I guess it's all subjective, you know. I I kind of lean towards possessed, you know, but uh it's also I lean more towards death. I think possessed is more like more like uh very heavy thrash. Death thrash. I would I would con I would consider them death thrash, yeah. Yeah, so 
Them but like, like Sepultura, Sepultura kind of like same kind of thing. But don't forget the Mantis days too. I mean, Death or Mantis before Death, and sure. uh, they had the Death by Metal demo, and then yeah. uh, you know where the term Death Metal came from, and then you had you know Possess Death Metal. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think they kind of go hand in hand, you know. Well, they both you know coined the phrase Death Metal. And I would throw, I would probably throw Necrophagia in there too. Yeah. That's cool though. Yeah, that's that's it all to get a whole show on just that. Hell yeah. What do you think started Death Metal? What's what albums, you know? Because most of those German bands kind of started, I guess, that because they were like more guttural with their approach than uh other bands were like, you know, yeah, the the, the creators and the Sodoms and early creator early Sodom, I think, is so underrated when it comes to the influence that they had on everything after that. I really do. Oh obsessed by cruelly by Sodom is like a really, really raw brutal album oh, yeah. you know you, oh yeah it's just it's i don't crazy. think those it's records stuff, get though. enough credit to be honest with you with the influence that they had to, to be honest with no, you no absolutely not show we could do there you go it's always something to do <laughs> yeah it was good though it was fun but this was fun i mean let's get together and do it again absolutely you know we'll you know you I'll pick it next time this time and we'll just you know we'll shoot the shit about it and you know we'll yeah. talk about whatever this was fun so here you have it everybody Bolt Thrower, discography, all their full lengths, all the lineup changes, who produced, mixed, mastered the records, the artwork, all that good stuff. And uh, thanks for hanging with us on the Realms of Metal and George G's Room of Rock. Appreciate you having me, Eddie. Really appreciate it. Honored to have you on. I'll try to take better notes next time. (laughs) (laughs) I got got all that covered. Whenever I do a video, I got all that stuff covered, George. I got to write. I gotta write stuff down the day of because my writing is horrible. It's almost like I'm doing oh, a book I said, like, what I just write. I don't <laughs> even know I wrote my stuff. I'm like, it's terrible. I'm like, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> it's almost like I'm doing a book report for each record. You know, it's pretty funny. But oh yeah, wouldn't that be good to do book reports back in the day like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, school was prepping us for something. It might might as well be yeah, this. See, you know, so. it wasn't. See, it wasn't always the time high school. <laughs> but again, yeah, thanks for having me though. I really appreciate it. We'll definitely have to do this again. Just pick a subject and we'll. Like you said, shoot the shit and we'll uh sounds good. Do it again. Everybody good, check man. out George G's Room of Rock YouTube channel. Great stuff. Thank you again, George. And uh thank you. Thank thanks you. for hanging with us on the realms of metal. We'll see you guys again real soon. You have a good one.